This hour of the Officer Tatum Show starts right now on Salem News Channel. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, I don't know if you've seen the video of the ex-Marine uh, allegedly choking a man on a train, a homeless man, threatening people, being deranged and delusional, threatening to kill people, claiming that he don't care about going to jail for the rest of his life and he's willing to hurt everybody on the train. But I guess since the Marine, the ex-Marine was white and the man who inevitably died was black, now everybody's up in arms and want to jump off a cliff and scream that there is injustice. Listen, when you got arrested 42 times and you're a career criminal and you threaten people on the train, somebody has to apprehend you to police show up. Unfortunately, it resulted in death. See you on the show. You're watching The Officer Tatum Show on Tatum News Channel, the antidote to the mainstream media. Brandon Tatum is a seven-year veteran of the Tucson Police Department. He's a YouTube sensation with over two million subscribers. He started Blexit with Candace Owens, and now he's tackling his biggest assignment yet. This is the Officer Tatum Show. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, welcome back to the Officer Tatum Show. I want to talk about this incident that's going viral of an ex-Marine that restrained a man who ended up dying on the subway of New York. Now, of course, because we live in a society where people are enthralled and have a fetish for racism, that because the ex-Marine was white and the, and the person who ended up dying was black, now all of a sudden we care. Now all of a sudden it's a big deal. Now all of a sudden we need justice. You know, this man who lost his life in this incident, which I would argue was unintentional, I would argue that the ex-Marine wasn't trying to kill him. The ex-Marine was trying to restrain him after he had made mention, and it wasn't just one man. It was multiple people trying to restrain him. The ex-Marine ended up having him in, 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 a, in a more significant control. Some would call it a chokehold. I don't consider that to be a chokehold. But let's let's continue to move forward. The man gets on the train, threatens people. Where's my clip list? Threatens people, saying that he, he hungry and he willing to hurt anybody on the train. He don't care about going to jail. He don't care about doing life in prison. This is what he's saying as he's attacking people or approaching people before he attacks them. And good Samaritans are saying enough is enough. One reason is because the police ain't, ain't on the transit system anymore. And they said enough is enough. And we're going to restrain this guy so everybody can safely get off the train. And then when the police finally arrive, we'll pass over custody to them. But unfortunately, the guy ends up passing out and dying on the train. Technically, he didn't die on the train. He was transported to a hospital, and he was pronounced dead at the hospital. And the backlash has, has ensued. People like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and other nutty Democrats cannot help their compulsion to claim that that man was murdered. They cannot help their compulsion. Uh, compu they cannot help their compulsion. To, to say that, oh, this guy was an innocent man and he was just trying to live his life. He was spending his life being a dancer and he had big hopes and dreams. He was only 30 years old when he was murdered. But not one time would they take 30 seconds to do research and realize that that man had been arrested 42 times from 2013 to 2021. That man has been committing crimes for nearly a decade. And I'm not saying you commit crimes you deserve to die, but this is a man that don't give a F about society, 
don't care about breaking the law, not a law-abiding citizen. He don't want to be in, in, introduced, interjected, being a part of normal society. He lived his life where nobody can tell him no, and he think he just can do whatever he want to do, scare people whenever he feel like it, assault people whenever he feel like it, and everybody is subject to his mood swing. This is the thing that bothers me. I see the same thing in classrooms in America. When I was, I forget what year it was when I was a police officer, but I dated a girl who was a school teacher. She was a kindergarten teacher. It was right around my son, my son was in kindergarten. And I remember going to her class and reading to her children. And they had one kid in the classroom. All he needed was his whooped. That's all he needed. That's all he needed. One or two times, he, he probably had been good, straight. The kid acts a fool in the classroom, screams, throw stuff, flip tables, damage stuff. And this is what the school does. Instead of somebody grabbing him and pulling him out of the classroom and saying, come pick your kid up because he out here acting nutty. And this ain't our responsibility unless you want me to spank him. Instead of doing that, they remove all the kids. They can't touch him. There's two conjoining classrooms. They remove all the kids from one classroom as he tears the classroom up, throws their personal belongings around, and acts a fool. And then what he does, because he's got not getting the attention that he wanted, he now goes over to the next classroom where they let him throw chairs, threaten kids, and they just remove all the kids out of the classroom. And when his blood sugar is low enough because he's tired after exhausting himself, the kids have to sit out in the hallway till he's done. And when he's done, they pat him on the back and say, everything is going to be okay. And the kids then lost out on their education for, I don't know, an hour, hour and a half. And you know what they do to the kid? Tomorrow he comes back to the classroom. And if he act up again, they do the same thing all over again. The kids are losing their education because nobody want to tell him no. And I see the same thing happening with the dude on the train. Everybody else needs to be punished because he don't know how to have self-control. If you're dealing with mental illness, that ain't got to do with me. They ain't got nothing. You don't get to thwart my constitutional rights because you got because you crazy. And what happens when a man meets what we call consequences? When a man gets on a train. And people are saying, we've had enough. You're not going to, I'm not going to sit back and watch you punch a lady in the face, throw somebody on the train tracks, choke somebody out, pull out a gun, pull out a knife, stab somebody, kill somebody, rape somebody. I'm not going to wait for you to do that. I'm going to be proactive because as a citizen, I have a right to be safe and to detain you if you are, if you are hurting other people. And when the rubber hit the road for this sorry sucker, unfortunately, he lost his life. But there is no reason whatsoever should they be demonizing a man who's trying to protect the public. If you had police on the thing, Mayor Adams, then we citizens wouldn't have to do this. After the 41st arrest, if you'd have had his narrow butt in the jail cell for a significant amount of time, nobody would have to choke him. Nobody would have to beat him up. That man arrested 42 times. If he would have lived, this would have been a 43rd arrest. You know, if you're a regular person like me and you go onto a train and you threatening people, that you would go to jail for threats and intimidation. You will, go, you will go to jail for disorderly conduct. You will go to jail for trespassing. And somebody like me will probably do some time. But, 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 but because you're homeless, quote, unquote, unquote, you're not homeless. These people aren't homeless. They choose to be in the streets. They choose to use drugs. Some of these people aren't mentally ill. They, they become mentally ill. Because when you slamming coke all day, meth all day, your brain can't handle that. And, and I'm telling you guys, it, it frustrates me to no end 
that people in political positions of power are, are making this politicized because a white man did it. You know, I, I just don't understand. There's another video, and, I, and I'm, I'm going to show y'all a video of that. I'm gonna, after the break, I'm going to play what Mayor Adams said uh, because, since he's the mayor. But there's another clip that I saw of a mother and father. I got to make a video about this on my YouTube. Of a mother and father coming out acting a fool, wanting to sue the police department because the police officer shot their son. Can you imagine what their son was doing? First of all, they black. They the only people that do this, black people. I'm just, I'm just, I'm keeping, I'm giving you a best known secret. They the only people come out and protest over something stupid. They kid out there, because it's a money grab. That's what it is. They see other black people doing it, they're going to do it. The boy run from the police with a gun in his hand. You can see it on the, you can see it on the body camera. He circled back, runs at the cop with the gun in his hand. Do you all know what two plus two equals? It equals four. Do you know what running at a cop with a gun in your hand and then pulling the gun up? That, that's called getting shot. He runs, he pulls the gun up, and then he switches the gun to another hand and, and kind of sets it up on a, on a patio. But you got to think, the cop don't know, after a man is running with, with a gun in his hand, that as he pulls the gun up and points it at the cop, that he's actually trying to switch it to his other hand to actually try to put it on a ledge to surrender. Man, ain't no cop got to, you know, uh, try to read your mind. This is this ain't this ain't it, the cop ain't got no terror reading cards. He ain't got to try to figure out what you're trying to do. Read the future. It two plus two is four. You pull a gun on a cop, you're gonna get shot. Hold the phone, I'll be back after the break. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, welcome back to the Officer Tatum Show. I want to tell you about uh the Tatum, the Tatum store. Did I say Tatum? Lord, help us all. Uh, Tatum store, my store, the store I created a few years ago that's literally blowing off the chain. Uh, I, I got this. We just jumped, launched this new item. I told you guys yesterday we were. I didn't know they were going to turn it around so quickly. But we got the shirt that I'm wearing right now, and it says two genders, and they have an XX and XY on it. People, it, and I don't spell genders all the way out. We kind of abbreviate genders and use a couple letters in so when you know, you know. If you look at it, you could you know, you first look at it, you may not know it says genders, but it's a way in which people can stand up without being so overt and and also put a little swag with it. So this two gender shirt we're going to release today. So don't go buy it now because I haven't even put it on the website, but we're going to release this today for pre-order um, and you will be able to get you one of those shirts. I mean, the coldest shirt that we've ever made. And we got three other ones that's even crazier. Like CRT is racist is one. Uh, we have another one that says castration is not health care. And another one that says uh, abortion is not health care or something like that. And so go to Tatum Store right now and to get 20% off your entire purchase, put in Tatum Show 20, Tatum Show 20, and get 20% off TatumStore.com. All right, let me play um, Mr. Mayor Adams, which I feel like that Mayor Adams have been um, doing a better job at being rational versus how he normally acts. But I want to play the clip from May, from the mayor speaking about this particular issue, roll clip two. On the question of vigilantism, what mm -hmm. do, you know, what, what do passengers do in situations like that? Is it appropriate to take matters into your own hands? Uh, each situation is different. And how a passenger, uh, we have so many cases where passengers assist of, of the riders, uh, and we don't know exactly what happened here until the investigation is thorough. And each situation is different. I was a former transit police officer, and I responded to many jobs where you had a passenger assisted someone. And so we cannot just blankly say, blankly say what a passenger should or should not do in a situation like that. We should allow the investigation to take its course. Uh, you know, it's funny that I have to make a video and, and explain to a certain degree why that makes sense, but it should be it should go without... It should be something that goes without saying. Let the investigation run its course. You know, if, if you say a, a citizen is wrong, investigate the situation and get the totality of circumstances so you can decide whether the citizen is wrong for their actions or the citizen is justified uh, for what they had done. I got a couple other articles that I want to talk about. You know, one, 
And I'm going to come back to a few. The one that I'm going to talk about a little bit later, because I want to get a couple more video clips of it, um, is that the Navy used the drag queen to recruit. Do you know how stupid that is? I mean, I don't know. Not as they want soy boys going into the Navy. Maybe, hey, I don't know. Maybe did the, would the Marine Corps do that? I don't know. I'm not trying to dig. I'm not trying to uh, uh, dig on the Navy, but all the Navy SEALs out there, hey, you got to you got to say something. But I'll talk about that a little later. I want to talk about this because I'm incredibly passionate about cycling. Um, we all know that the cyclist uh, literally beat women in the cycling race in New Mexico. I think it was New Mexico. And it, and, and you can look at him, and homeboy looked like a male cyclist in the midst of women. And it's embarrassing that anybody would even con consciously think that makes sense. You go from racing with men to racing with women. And then you win it all. It, you know, the thing is, is that these transgender people aren't just competing. They're winning it all. Have you noticed that? The only trans person in the race got first place. Let's just, just put this process this for a minute. Lil Thomas was the only trans swimmer, number one. You got the, the, the cyclist that, that, that raced in the uh, stage race in New Mexico, the only transgender, number one. You know, the transgender MMA fighter, number one. Do need we say more? You got the transgender running track. The only transgender in that district running track ranked number one. If you look at transgender in transgenders in sports, they're like batting at 100% of, of male to female at 100%. The dude that ran the marathon, he ran as a man in New York, then ran in London about a couple months later. I don't, I don't even think he placed whatsoever in New York. He went to London and was number one out of 14,000 women. He was number one. To me, that should tell you something that is not a coinky dink that these dudes are turning in, are, are, are impersonating women. Society accepts it, and they become number, say it with me, number one. Not number two, not number three, not missing the podium, not competing. They are the number one people because men and women are biologically different. And I don't care if you cut it off, if you saw it off, if you tuck it under, if you flip it over, I don't care if you're taking medicine, you're still a man. You put your heels on, put your miniskirt on, wear a thong, you're still a man. Because at some point, the doctor going to have you hiked up on that table checking your prostate. At some point, if you were to get testi testicular cancer, they're not going to accidentally identify them as ovaries. You know, stop it already. But the UCI, which is the, the governing body for cycling, uh, it says it right here in the article, the governing body for cycling, for sports cycling, defends Aston Killips, which is the dummy in the Gila tour in New Mexico. It says Killip broke free, and I'm going to read the, this kind of the synopsis. Killip broke free from the pack in the final minutes of the race, clocking at three hours, seven minutes, and 16 seconds, and defeating two women um, on the podium. Killer became the first transgender female to win a UCI stage race. <laughs> Woo, they going to hell. Killip's win caused a massive uproar, obviously on social media, and however, the UCI came out in defense of the policy. Let me read the policy. It says the UCI acknowledges that transgender athletes may wish to compete in accordance with their gender identity. The UCI rules are based on the latest uh, scientific knowledge uh, and have been applied in a consistent manner. The UCI continues to follow the, uh, the evolution of scientific findings and may change its rules in the, in, in the future as science uh, knowledge evolves. The, U the UCI tightens its rules for transgender females riders to compete against biological females 
in these events. According to uh, uh, Reuters, the organization, um, Reuters, I'll say Reuters, Reuters, the organization halved, I don't know, halved, the maximum uh, permitted plasma testosterone levels to 2.5 liters or per liter and double the transition period of 24 months. Hold the phone. I'll be back after the break. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Austin Tatum Show. I don't know if it's people have always been this nutty or just we are getting exposed to it more because of social media. Back to the cycling person. Let me read the statement that this person made, and it, and it angers me. It infuriates me. I can feel my blood boiling. Listen to this this person talk this way. Uh, Killips dismissed the uproar as nonsense on an Instagram post. After a week of nonsense on the Internet, I'm especially thankful for everyone in the Peloton and sports who continue to affirm that Twitter is not real life. And, and this article says, she said, it's a dude. I'm disrespecting all of y'all from now on. It's a, you a dude. I, y- y'all, y'all, y'all doing too much. I ain't, I ain't, I'm not, I'm not holding back. If you, if you come in front of me and you, and you trying to do all that training stuff, you a dude. I'm not, I'm, I'm not, you look like a dude. I'm a, I'm gonna tell a person, you a dude and you look like a dude. Get homeboy out of here. I'm not going to play this game with people anymore. We done played the game too long that now they gaslighting us. Like, we're we, 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 we trying to let you live your life, but you don't want to just live your life. You want to thwart the rights of women. You're going to stand in front of the people and say this is nonsense because people are questioning the fairness I just, what are the odds? The only trans person wins. Okay. So this fool goes on to say, I love my peers and competitors, and I'm grateful to every every opportunity I get to learn and to grow as a person and athlete on course together. I can't stand these people. You look at them, a dude got a five o'clock shadow. Just gaslighting y'all. And I said this yesterday, and... It makes me mad because I'm a man of integrity. But where, where y'all women at? Who, who, who is letting their daughter compete against a transgender? Who, 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 who are you? Pull your, pull your daughter out of that race. What are y'all doing? You know men have more strength, endurance, and all that more than women. If, if it wasn't the case, then why is there an NBA and a WNBA? Why is there women's track and male track? A woman couldn't keep up with a man in track and field to save Jesus Christ. We know that to be a fact. It's not an opinion. Look at the, look at the record for the 100-meter dash in men versus women. It's not even close. It's not even close. Look at the way the men ride in the peloton. And the peloton is just the, when they're in a big group of cyclists riding together. Women be riding at like 30 miles per hour, 28 miles per hour in the peloton. Men are at like 38, 39, cruising. You look at the men in the sprint. And, and those of you who don't know about tra- uh, cycling, you may not understand this. If you Google it, you'll know what I'm talking about. In the sprint, the final part of the race, they race as hard as they can to try to see who crosses the finish line. Men are putting out 1,700 watts, 1,800 watts. I don't even think women hit 1,000 watts. They probably putting out 600 watts, 700 maybe, 500 watts. The dudes can hold 500 watts, 450 watts for an hour, which is unbelievable, but men are that much stronger than women. That's why they don't race men and women together. The dudes will just smash them. And with that being said, I need to figure out when this Caleb dude, Caleb dude, transitioned. I'm going to try to look it up. Can one of y'all look it up for me? When did um, uh, Dummy Caleb 
transition. I don't know what his person's name is. Cyclist. I'm going to find a name. Hold on a second. I want y'all to look this up. When did Philip? It's something kill up. It's on here somewhere. When did uh, Austin Killup transition? Austin Killup. Just look, when did Austin Killup transition? I'm sure it's a hot topic on Google, so they'll have some some uh, some statistical data there. But the fact that they letting these people do this, and, and I just often wonder, like, how do you live with yourself? That's like me saying I identify as a as a twelve year old, and I go, and I go back and just smash on these twelve year olds, and then I'm celebrating at the end. Ah, I won! I'm the champion! Everybody, oh, this is so great! Thank you for letting me participate. I'm a thirty year old man. I'm marrying the twelve year olds and celebrating it. What'd you say it was? Twenty nineteen. Let me tell you guys about Relief Factor before I go to the break. Dummy was transitioned in 2019, but we'll talk about that later. If you're looking for a solution to aches and pains, if you're looking for a supplement that works, Relief Factor is your supplement. I take Relief Factor every single day, and it works well for me. So I'm encouraged to encourage you, and I'm confident to give you confidence that Relief Factor will work for you. All you got to do is go to relieffactor.com. Uh, go and look at the testimonies. And I, I, I honestly believe the biggest selling point to anything that you do is a, is, a, is a living testimony. When you see what this has done for other people, then you can make an adequate decision about what it can do for you. Get started with the three-week quick starter for $19.95. Go to relieffactor.com or call 800-4-RELIEF. I got to get back on the radio. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, ladies, welcome back to the Offset of Show. Let me tell you about the Salem News Channel. If you're looking for an incredible channel, we can hear all the Salem hosts at one time. The first hour syndicated on all of our shows are syndicated on the Salem News Channel live. So while you're watching, some people are watching me right now on the Salem News Channel. Others who are listening in your car or wherever else you get the AM radio stations, you can actually go download the Salem News Channel. You can do the website at salemnewschannel.com or you can download Salem News Channel on the App Store, and you can watch me right now. So Salem News Channel is the place to be. Go and download it, look it up, and enjoy. So I want to touch base on uh, what I was saying about the dum-dum that, that should be ashamed of himself. I mean, you could look at him, bro. Look at him. Let, let me just read this real quick. Uh, it says Killer riding for Amy D Foundation uh, team attack clear on the final rise to the finish, winning the stage by eight seconds from second place in turn take over the overall by 89 seconds, uh, earning the top share of $35,000 euro money. No, no, it's $35,000, not Euro money. Total price pot for the five-stage race equal the men's purse for the first time in events 36-year history. So this person beat, ended up winning overall. Just so you know, like, there's stages, right? And on here it says that there's five stages. So that means there's five separate race days. So each day you race... And the person that wins the race at the end with the least amount of time taking them to finish the race wins. And so this person ended up beating the woman on the final stage by eight seconds, which pushed this uh, man racing against women up 89 seconds to win the overall team win. So if you don't know about cycling, it's not an individual sport. Cycling is actually a team sport. And your team rides for their key player, right? So they do all the riding and do all the techniques. And the person that's the best on the team that can finish strong, that's the strongest sprinter, they sit back and just ride on the wheel of their teammates the entire race. So that at the end of a three-hour race, that person is fresh. And they use their best person for last, who's the freshest. And they put 
you know, all the domestiques and the young people on the team to just gun it out and to the finish. So for three hours of, a, you know, for two and a half hours of a three-hour race, the other teammates are giving it all they got. And the main person is literally normally just kind of sitting back in the peloton or sitting back in the ride until they have to finally kick it in the gear at the end of the race. Now, somebody explained to me this. If there is no advantage for transgender people in sports, then why is Killip the number one player on their team that everybody's racing for because they know that this person can finish it strong? How is Killip the finisher? How is Killip the top? How does Killip win that stage to win the overall victory? You know, it, it's, it's because the person is trans. So let me... Let me uh, Go down, and you can even look at this. I think I tried to look this person up. I mean, look at the pictures, man. Look at the pictures, man. You see all these women in the pictures, and y'all can't see it because you're on the radio, but you look at the pictures, woman, woman here, woman here, woman here, woman here, and you're like, oh, who's this dude in the corner there? Oh, that person's supposed to be a woman. Dude in the corner. It's, it's, man, like, I, I, can't, I can't say how I really feel about this situation because I probably won't be on the radio no more. But this is not okay, man. This dude got a mental illness, and they're just placating to the mental illness. According to the articles that was written right here, it says that this person transitioned. It says, reports of Chicago native Killips took up cycling in 2019 before starting hormone replacement therapy, it says a three-time U.S. Olympian, five-time national road champion who said this is cyclist equivalence of Leah Thomas, the transgender swimmer who faced... Okay, let me see. When, when did this person transition? It says right here that the native took up cycling in 2019 before starting hormone replacement. Which is like where where is where is when did it, when did all this happen? It says they started cycling in 2019. When did they when did he start hormone therapy? I'm looking at the article and it don't tell you anywhere where he started hormone therapy. That tell that should tell you all you need to know. When did this person start taking hormones? If you started in 2019. You ain't number four years in the cycling. Why weren't you a girl your whole life? You changed in 2019? And in 2023, you 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 beating women? Like, what, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? A man get to be a man his whole life. In, in, in 30 minutes of being a woman, he can now have access to everything women have access to, and they've been women their whole life. It, it ticks me off so bad, y'all have no idea. Like, I, I want to say, hey, you want to be, oh, yeah, you a girl now, get in a boxing ring, and let's see what you made of. You want to beat up on these girls, get in the boxing ring. Let's see what kind of girl you are. It says in, in, in this in the article, it says this really highlights the issues that are happening to women in cycling. Uh, Thompson suggested. So we have more than 50 transgender women in, in the sport. And what's going on in the background is that women are just quietly walking away. They think, why bother if it's not fair? Like, I, I just can't. I just can't. Like, I'm so frustrated right now. I'm glad that I'm going to the break because I want to say something crazy about this person and everybody else that's literally spitting in the face of women to take over women's sports. Hold the phone. I'll be back after the break. Have you noticed everything that follows no offense is offensive? Like, no offense, but you're overpaying for your wireless plan. See? Offensive. Unlimited plans as low as $35 from Straight Talk. And now get a free phone on select plans at Walmart.
Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, welcome back to the Officer Tatum Show. I I just feel like when I see the reason I'm so passionate because I, I feel like I'm watching women get abused, and everybody's turning a blind eye to it. They turning a blind eye to it. Look at the pity in these women's faces. Look at that dude's legs compared. Y'all can't see it, but you Google it. Look at the championship thing. Look at this dude's legs compared to the women. Homeboy get the transition at, in 2019. I, I, let me read some of these comments. It says, if we must respect people's gender identity, then we also must respect people's biological sex. And so far as sports or categories of male and female, I believe they should be referred to sex, not gender. Uh, the deliberate muddying up the waters by confusing the two helps no one and seems to cause a lot of pain. Uh, women's sports, just another thing men have ruined, is a comment. Uh, it's all perfectly normal. I'm sure professional athletes are regularly beaten by people who only took up the sport four years ago in the mid in the mid twenties, in their mid twenties. These cis men probably just need to try a bit harder and go through male puberty or something. I get I get the sarcasm there. How are teachers in academia setting UCI regulations? Question mark. It seems like most people are kind of bucking the system on this thing. Becoming the first biological male to win a UCI women's stage. It it, it, it just I got to go into something else because I'm 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 gonna go down the rabbit hole and just get even more upset, but. As a cyclist myself, I mean, I, I respect the sport, and there's so many great qualities in the sport. And to see them let men just dominate women is just is crazy to me. And then these cowards are turning a blind eye. Anyway, let me get a couple callers in. Um, some of you guys will be I'll be able to get like one caller in, and I'll get the rest of you in the next segment. Let me go with let me go to Greg uh, from Florida. Greg, welcome to the All Stadium Show. Hi, Officer Tatum. Hey, I, I want to encourage you to keep up the good work. Uh, you're a good voice for God, and you're a, you're a voice of reason in a sea of liberal idiots, uh, to put it bluntly. But don't don't let up on the transgender thing. Don't let up on the racial uh, nonsense that uh, you know. I've I've got mixed grandkids, and I asked them the other day. I mean, they're as black as anybody. If they, uh, what, what they had experienced with uh, racism, and they, what are you talking about, Grandpa? And I explained, and they says, no, you know. And I have a little racial humor that I think you might like. You made a comment the other night that no white guy walks down a, a black neighborhood, and I, I, I tend to agree with that. But one time I was in the city, and I lost my way, and I found myself, I mean, deep into black neighborhood. And I was thinking, man, I hope I get out of here soon. It was about high noon. And all of a sudden, a big dog came off the front porch, came out and started following me. Didn't make a sound. I got to go to the break, Greg. Thank